on, is on the far right, and that is silver. The eight largest traders are short 183 days, 182 or 183 days of world silver production. And as you and I talked off air before this interview started, that's six months of world silver production that commercial traders, the supply demand fundamentals, everybody knows it now that there's been a structural uh, physical deficit in silver for the last, go, this is the fourth year that it's, that it's been, been around. And the the only reason, the only reason that the price has not blown higher is because J.P. Morgan is, who owns, Ted said, you know, is in physical possession of at least, of at least one billion ounces of physical silver has been supplying this deficit all this time. And, um, early in, early in February, he figured that they dumped well over half of it in the market already, uh, in order to prevent, um, the supply demand uh, fundamentals from uh, showing up in the price. But this is uh, ongoing, it is structural. There's no way it can be, uh, it's no way it can be fixed by mine supply. And uh, even if, if the price went to say $200 an ounce tomorrow, the deficit will remain, uh, and it'll take five, 10 years for, for mining production to catch up to that. So as long as JP Morgan is supplying the physical silver to uh, fill the deficit, you know, they can play with the price all they want, and that's what they've been doing. Um, so I'm like everybody else. I mean, I'm all in on silver. You know, I've got my physical, I've got my my shares, and I'm just waiting for this, uh, this supply-demand fundamental thing to kick in, as was Ted and as everybody. So that's the situation in the physical side. Now, in the paper market, you know, there's there's the COMEX futures market. You know, there's the LME and the Shanghai and the Hong Kong and all these exchanges. But the fact of the matter is, it doesn't make any difference what the commodity is. There's silver, gold, platinum, palladium, crude oil, natural gas, a whole raft of physical commodities. They're all traded on the COMEX, and that where the, that's where the price is set. And, and Ted would go off on deep end on this, and he was absolutely correct. It doesn't matter what's going on in London. It is a totally opaque market, completely opaque. You can't see anything in there. And all the statistics they give you are so out of date and so distorted, you don't know what's going on there. But the price doesn't matter how many millions of ounces they sell or trade, it doesn't affect the price. Let me give you an example of that, Dunnigan. India this year has purchased, I don't know, 120 million ounces of silver over a three month period. I think it was that's something or that order. Now that's 24,000, 120 million ounces is 24,000 COMEX contracts. Let me ask you this question. If you went into the COMEX and placed a long order for 24,000 contracts, what would that do to the price besides drive it to the moon and stars? You know, of course, you know, India's, the, the people who are buying in India were smarter than that. They went and bought it on the LME, where it didn't affect the price at all. They just went there and said, okay, fine, we need 24,000 contracts or 130 million ounces. And they took it out of, off the market, took delivery of it, physical delivery of the silver, and the price didn't move an inch. So that tells you right there that it matters not what's going on in Shanghai. Or the LME. Now, it might someday, you know, some of the things they do, especially in Shanghai, do spill over into the COMEX, but the price is set in the COMEX futures market. And that is the way it's been forever. And at some point, uh, you know, with the BRICS thing and the rise of China and stuff like that, it may change over to the Shanghai Gold Exchange. But at the moment, we're still under the, um, you know, under the thumb of the American empire. And uh, their kind of grip on on commodity prices is the same as their grip on air power and su air superiority and sea superiority and the dollar index. And, you know, when you're an empire, you control everything. It's like the British Empire. They control everything. They control everything now. And the commodities, including gold and silver, are just one more aspect that they have under their umbrella uh, that, uh, that they keep controlling now. Okay, so if they're listening to this interview, they can just scroll down the page there and you'll see it. It's very simple. Uh, these are the physical, I think there's 13, I'm not going to count them, but I think there's, the, these are the physical commodities that are traded in the COMEX futures market on a daily basis. And the chart is extremely simple. Um, the, the 
the commitment traders report shows that the concentrated short positions of the four largest traders and the eight largest traders in every physically traded commodity on the COMEX, and they're all represented on this chart. And the obvious one is on the far right, and that is silver. The eight largest traders are short 183 days, I think it's 182 or 183 days of world silver production. And as you and I talked off air before this interview started, that's six months of world silver production that the commercial traders, all the collusive commercial traders, are short in the COMEX futures market. The four traders, that's the red bar, the green bar is the eight, and the red bar is the four, the largest four. Uh, the four largest traders are short, what, 120 days? So the the five through eight traders are short the difference between the red bar and the green bar. And that's the same for all of the commodities going right down the list. And as you point correctly pointed out, the short positions of the four largest traders dominate the, the, the uh, uh, f- uh, big eight short positions in all the commodities, no exceptions to that rule. And uh, you'll notice, make careful note of the fact that gold, silver, platinum, and palladium are nailed to the four, uh, to, nailed to the right of the chart, and with the, the odd exception of cocoa once in a while for other reasons. It does sneak in there, but, you know, those silver has been nailed to the right-hand side of that chart for the last 45 years, except for a couple of weeks in 2008 when... Um, Palladium was the hot number of three thousand dollars an ounce, and silver got bumped out of there for one or two weeks. But silver has the largest concentrated short position of any physical commodity in the history of planet Earth. And if until that changes, um, nothing changes. Take a look at crude oil, which is on the far left of that chart. I think the uh, big four are short four days worlds of go- oil production in the. The, two, the big four are short two days, okay? Let me ask you this question. If you could take the short position in silver of 180 day, uh, eight, 182 days and stick it on the price of crude oil, what would it be? Make me $5 a barrel, $3 a barrel. The short position uh, of the size that's on silver on crude oil would crush the price, crush it, of any commodity, okay? And um, it's been this way for 50 years. And it, like Ted correctly pointed out, uh, if that short position didn't exist or if it was far more modest, let's say it was down around where soybean oil or copper is, copper is a good example because they're both industrial metals, then it, the price of silver would be something well north of $100 an ounce, Keith Newmeyer's three-digit silver price. So that short position, and in silver most prominently, and of course platinum is right behind it with gold and palladium, if those short positions were normal like the rest of the commodities, their prices would be absolutely sky high compared to the are today. And it's this commitment of traders report concentrated short position that Ted's been going on about ever since he started in this business back in 1985. And even before that, when he was getting the commitment as traders report once a month by mail, now we get it every week, every week. So we're getting fairly recent data, but it's this concentrated short position, which has always been there. That is what's keeping the silver price, uh, in the dirt. And it's those eight traders, all of which work in collusion. Uh, the latest COT report, if people are interested, uh, let me just bring this up here. I got it right here in front of me. In silver, these eight traders are short about 55% of the entire open interest in silver. 55%. You know, so it doesn't make any difference what the other 45% of the traders do that are long or short in this commodity. The big eight, all working in collusion, as Ted points out, um, control the price. And in gold, it's even far worse. Let me just bring it up here. In gold, eight traders are short north of 60% of the total open interest in silver and gold, which is right now the open interest is 444,000 contracts. That's about 270,000 contracts that the um, big eight are short, and they're all banks, all investment houses, and they're all sitting on the price. And as Ted has pointed out for decades, until that changes, nothing changes. 